Paper was like gold in medieval times. Oh, not tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. When you live in a classic city like Florence, people are always passing through. The art, the history, the atmosphere act like a magnet, drawing people from as far away as other continents or simply the next city. Ho conosciuto cinesi, americani, siamesi. Sì, sì, no, è alta, bionda, blue eyes, carina, sì, 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 molto simpatica. Va bene? Allora stasera? Ok, grazie. Ciao, Ciccio. Ciao, ciao. I'm waiting for my friend Sandra, who's coming through town to check out the local art scene. But what she doesn't know is that I've taken the liberty on setting her up on a blind date. Hey, Sandra! Una ragazza italiana che quando passa lascia la scia. Sandra, I have a surprise for you. A surprise? Yeah. I set you up on a blind date. A blind date? Yeah. <laughs> Conky! Yes. What well, doesn't matter, Conky? Don't worry about it, it'll be good. Come on, Dave. I even told him you know how to cook. Dave, you know I'm not a great cook. That's okay, that's right, Conky. I've never been on a blind date, Dave. I don't well, know what to do. You don't know what to do? You've got about nine hours to figure it out. I'm going to go to the market. Ingredients for tonight's big okay, make sure they're good. I will. Here's okay. the key to the apartment. Okay. Go for a walk around the scene. I'll see you later. All right. Okay. Great. Thanks, Dave. Ciao. Una ragazza italiana che quando passa lascia la scia. Oh. È la sola per me. Ah. Buongiorno signora, I have a friend. Quindi, mia amica. Mi ha amica. Secondo me sì. Ah, aphrodisiac. Sì, due di questi. Bene, grazie. Saluto il tuo marito. Ciao. Panna cotta or cooked cream is a traditional Italian dessert and it's always a favorite at dinner parties. There are a lot of versions of panna cotta. Different fruits with chocolate. But when the fruit vendor Maria at the market tells me that mango is an aphrodisiac and it happens to be my favorite fruit, it's definitely going to be a winning combination, especially for Sandra. First thing, get a saucepan and heat it up. Now, panna means cream, so the star ingredient is whipping cream. What's fabulous about this dessert doesn't call for the typical measurements that most desserts require, you know, very preciso, very precise. My friend's mother first taught me this and uh, she would say, ah, misuri, non ci sono, don't worry, there are no measurements. Just a little bit of cream, maybe a little bit of milk, sugar, honey, via. But one thing she would always say, lots of love, that's the only measurement you have to worry about. I like to put about a third of milk. This makes it just a little lighter. An important part of panna cotta is gelatin strips. 
And you want to get unflavored gelatine. You have these wonderful little wafers and just a couple of them. And whisk it in. We're going to just cook it until everything dissolves. And lastly, some sugar and honey. Little bit of sugar, quanto basta, a couple of tablespoons. Just a touch. Now, desserts that you can make all'occhio, by the eye, I love. There's nothing worse than fussing around with measuring cups and all that. No, that's, that's not fun. Mmm. Just before your panna cotta comes to a boil, remove it from the stove. With a fine sieve, just pour in all the cooked cream. Now for the sexy part of this dessert, mango. For me, this is a perfect fruit for this panna cotta. I'm just gonna dice it up. Here in Italy, they often use frutta di bosco, which is blueberries and blackberries, raspberries, and they just sprinkle it on top. But we're gonna do something a little different. Cut the mango. To little cubes. Mm. I'm gonna put it right inside the cooked cream. So this way every spoonful will have this wonderful fruit flavor. I'm gonna save a little bit so I can just sprinkle it right on top just before serving. You can always make a little more and it stays in the fridge for about three, four days. It's perfect. Tonight's a special occasion, so let's be a little fancy. Once the cooked cream has cooled down, place them in the fridge for a couple of hours. This wonderful silky consistency will solidify and it will be heaven in a glass. Now, hopefully their date will be as smooth as this panna cotta. Sculpted their legs. Yeah, no, they're doing something very look intricate at, there. Just look under his skirt. <laughs> so this one over here, that's rape of the saving women. Really? Art history, York University 101. <laughs> so tell me more about this guy, Dave. Like, does he enjoy art, architecture? Art, he architecture. Know? He loves it all. Yeah. Okay, so you'll love him. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> like, does he have a car? Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, what kind of guys do you like? I mean, there's tons of these guys out here. What kind of guy do you like? Okay, I like someone who's intelligent. Who okay, can how about hold this guy? Good how about this guy? <laughs> he looks fairly sporty. He yes, looks good, yeah. you know. Maybe a bit like a linguine cooked too much. No, he's not al dente. Not al dente. No, not al dente. No, no. Like if you had to compare a guy to a food dish, what kind Dave, of. Dave, <laughs> it's so hard to find. You know, you, you want know, like I a bacala in the oven. A specialty dish. A specialty dish. So it'd be kind of like uh, spaghetti al modo mio. Who, but who's loving? Who's and loving? Caring. So it'd be like una zuppa di fagioli. But who's a man? Who's warm? But a man. A man. So it'd kind of be like uh, Papa Pomodoro. No, mm, ribolita. Not quite. Maybe ribolita. La minestra. It'd be like a minestrone. You know, kind of homey, there for you. Yes. That guy there looks like a fusilli al dente. It's look right. at that guy there. I mean, look how well he's dressed. Oh, no, okay. not convinced yet. So, what about that guy? Wow, he's interesting, I have to say. Yeah. He's very interesting. And what would you compare him to? Risotto with truffles. Mm, fancy. Very hard to find, a delicacy, molto fine, molto fine. intoxicating. Intoxicating, extra virgin, grana padano, some rucola, olio di olive. 
a sure way to any woman's heart, or in this case, hopefully a man's heart, is with an elegant dish of beef carpaccio. I always get a hood on making something as volo on the fly, where my guests are ooing and aahing on how good it is if they only knew how simple it was to prepare. A few things to remember for your beef carpaccio. Buy the best beef available. I like to use a lean cut of beef tenderloin and I put it in the freezer for about a half hour. This is so I can easily cut it into thin slices. The story behind carpaccio was that it originated in Venice at the famous bar, Harry's Bar, where a customer was forbidden by her doctor to have cooked meat, so they just whipped this dish up, naming it after the Renaissance painter, Carpaccio. I like to give the beef a good pounding. and just plate the thinly sliced meat. And now the fun part, putting all our ingredients on. It's kind of like a salad. People here have it as an antipasto or as a light main. Rucola works fabulous on this dish. Just rip up some rucola. Grana Padano really works well. And I like to just make shavings, kind of gives it a pretty presentation. That's about it. Podisale, lots of olive oil. Now, lastly, I like to use pomegranate wherever I can. And I find it gives this dish a sexy sophistication. And the Romans believed that it was a symbol of fertility. And that can't be a bad thing. I think this calls for a taste test. A little bit of lemon that gives it a nice zing. It tastes even better than it looks. One thing's for sure, they'll be falling in love with this dish. Sandra. Sandra. Buonasera. Buonasera. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey, is that Thank Luca? You. Yeah. Luca. Fantastic piece. Yes, absolutely. This is yellow now, marble. Marble, I yeah. thought so. Yes. It's wonderful. The workmanship. It's how she potato. <laughs> yellow Siena marble by Marco Rituani. It's a fantastic sculpture. Yeah, He's worked the marble so, differently, is that yeah, right? Yeah, but it's the same block of marble. It's the same. Right. So, have you bought it? <laughs> Has she signed uh, her check? <laughs> Working. We're almost there. I thought you were <laughs> no, signing no, the check day. Walter, sorry, but we have to get going. Sandra's a, a big date. Oh, goodness. I have a big date. Oh. <laughs> Hot date. Wow. Well, okay, enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Enjoy. Very nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. A presto. Ciao. Ciao. Who is that guy? He's a friend of mine. Is he single? Yeah, he's single. And I think he's got this big date tonight. It's a, a way of celebrating a, a wonderful evening, to start the meal, during the meal, sparkling wine. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers Sandra. Eh? I think uh, you're off to a good start. To a good start. <laughs> Salute. Posso portare una bottiglia a casa? Sì. I'll take a bottle home. Sì, sì. Alicia. 
Prosecco is Italy's answer to champagne. It's a common beverage that you can have as an aperitivo or even to celebrate a wonderful evening or an important date. It's sparkling, it's dry, and it's yummy. Hello, Sandra. Are we gonna get going? Yeah. It's really good. It's good. While Sandra's getting ready for her big date this evening, I'm gonna be preparing my A-list dish, risotto with beet puree and truffle oil. This is definitely a sexy, stylish looking dish, especially with the red, bright fuchsia color from the beet juice and the intoxicating smell of truffle oil. One bite of this and there'll be lots of loving in the air. Now this is a basic risotto recipe with a couple of twists. Shallots, of course. And some recipes call for white cooking onion as well and garlic. But I like to just use shallots. I find it's a lot lighter and sweeter for this recipe. Nice dice. Ooh, I'm not getting emotional because I'm playing Cupid. These are strong. Definitely the star of this recipe are beets. And fortunately here in Italy, they cater to the lazy man. You can go to any supermarket and pick up these packages of pre-boiled beets. And what I do, put in my juicer, give it a really good juicing, and you get this wonderful pureed beet juice. And I always like to add a little of the pulp. This intensifies the flavor and even the bright fuchsia color. And of course, the start to any good risotto. Some extra virgin olive oil. And a little bit of unsalted butter. It's nice to cook with proper cooking utensils. And for risottos, a flat wooden spoon works really well. You can really work in the rice and get right around the edges and scoop all the risotto when you're cooking it. Now I'm using a arborio rice. Of course, any type of short grain Italian rice will work well. Four handfuls for about two people. And I love toasting the rice along with the shallots and olive oil and butter. And you're cooking it on high heat. Keep giving it a stir. You don't want it to attaccare. You don't want it to stick to the pan. Get it nice and translucent and toasty. Every good risotto has some white wine. Just a touch. White wine is gonna enter into the rice and flavor it, and it's gonna evaporate. Once that evaporates, really important to start adding your broth. And this is just a vegetable broth. In fact, I'm kind of cheating, showing all my lazy traits. This is a bouillon cube I've just heated up. Spent a lot of time with Sandra today trying to convince her about the whole date thing. And when it evaporates, and you can see the bottom of the pan, add a little more. Cooking time is about 16 to 20 minutes, depending on how al dente you want it. And once that dries up, we can start adding the beautiful pureed beet juice. This is where the beauty of this dish comes in. Smells good. Hey, nice looks day. good. Thank you. This is where the fun happens, Sandra. Okay. For this it's dish, very I mean. hot, I can see. <laughs> That's great. And lastly, I'll finish this dish off with some truffle oil, something you like. It looks great. Yeah, well, if yeah. you think this looks good, wait till you see this. Beef carpaccio. Ooh. Ooh. And I think he will love this. Well, I think Luca will prefer the risotto tartufo. Luca? Who's Luca? Luca, Luca the artist from Ken's Art Gallery. <laughs> Luca's not coming over tonight, it's Hermes. Hermes. Yeah, from Bruno's Electrical Company. Hermes. Uh. 
an electrician. Yeah. Grande, oh, come yeah. stai? Bene, come stai? Qualcuno bello, ha chiamato eh? un elettricista. Yeah, we call for an electrician. Hermes, Santa, Santa Ciao. Hermes. Ciao. Sandra cooked all day long. Eh, ha cucinato la Santa. Sì. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, my English is very, very, very terrible. Your English is very, very good, non ti preoccupare. A little bit of prosecco, ne? Grazie. Now, I'm not going to be playing Cupid all night. Cosa prendiamo a questo incontro? A cosa -na 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 -na. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Ecco no quello problem, che ho fatto Dave. Sarà. Carpaccio, risotto. Perfetto. Allora la Cheers. nostra. Mm. Vuoi assaggiare il carpaccio? Sì, grazie. So, signora. how's everything? Tutto a posto? Sì, David, eh, tutto sì, a posto. Sì. E il vino, how's il vino? Il vino è, eh. è buono. Ma... Buon anno, 99. Eh. Ah, I know you eh. want a 97, but that's a second date. Senti, baci, have a good time. Buon divertimento. I have my date now. Ok, okay. okay. Ciao, 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 ciao. Una ragazza italiana che quando passa lascia la scia. Oh. È la sola per me, ah, è la sola per me. Hey, Mia. Oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. Good. So? Oh, what a day. Oh, yeah. What a day. How did it go? It went well. Yeah. yeah. Went well. A lot of work playing Cupid, though. I would imagine so. <laughs> Does she like her mess? She liked her mess. Her mess liked her. They both, I think, like the food. <laughs> <laughs> so all ends well, David. All ended well. Are you okay. hungry? I'd love some carpaccio. I've been having I've had it on my mind all day and I don't know why. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. What do you want to go for? <laughs> Give well, me I mean, the, the stuff. The food helped out. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, playing Cupid is not easy. I, I to told you her all day long. Okay, but when she saw him, did she think he was hot? Yeah, she thought he was hot, I guess so. I mean, she whispered in my ear, hey, he's so hot. <laughs> Una ragazza italiana che quando passa lascia la scia. Oh, è la sola per me. Ah.